In the early hours of April 15, 1912, after colliding with an iceberg in the North Atlantic, the famous British passenger liner RMS Titanic sank to the ocean depths, leaving just 706 survivors. Whatever became of them after this tragedy? Well, some of them went on to live long and incredible lives. The unsinkable Molly Brown is one of the most popular and liked characters in the 1964 movie and earlier Broadway musical, based on the great ship's unlucky maiden voyage. But this woman wasn't just thought up by some Hollywood screenwriter, she was a real passenger. Margaret Brown was known even before the Titanic for being one of the first women in the US to run for office eight years before women could even vote. She was in London when she found out that her grandson was sick, so she headed to New York immediately. Because this decision was so last minute, very few people knew that she was on board the Titanic. Once the ship struck the iceberg, Mrs. Brown selflessly helped other passengers into the lifeboats until she was eventually talked into getting into one herself. After being rescued by the RMS Carpathia, she organized a committee with other first-class survivors and Carpathia passengers. The committee would raise money and provide counseling for the more destitute people that lived through the tragedy. Upon arriving in New York, she wouldn't leave the rescue ship until she made sure that every survivor received medical attention and found their families. Mrs. Brown was given a medal for her goodwill in helping the Titanic survivors. She was also later awarded the French Legion of Honor for her charitable work rebuilding France and helping soldiers. A truly extraordinary woman. Speaking of incredible women, throughout her career working at sea, Miss Violet Constance Jessup survived not one, but three shipwrecks, the Titanic included. She started out as a stewardess on board the Olympic, which crashed in 1911. Just seven months later, she survived the Titanic, and then went on to serve as a nurse for the British Red Cross on the HMHS Britannic. This ship sank from an explosion, but Violet yet again came out of it and kept working at sea. This adventurous spirit finally settled down in Great Ashfield, England. Just like Margaret Brown, Violet was often jokingly called Miss Unsingable. There's definitely truth to that. The actress Dorothy Gibson, most famous for her role in the 1912 movie Saved from the Titanic, was actually one of the survivors of the catastrophe. She and her mother were coming back to the US on board the Titanic after vacationing in Europe. The two had been playing bridge with some friends when the ship struck the iceberg. They escaped together in the half-empty lifeboat number 7, but nearly sank again when one of the other survivors noticed a hole in the boat. Luckily, they were able to plug it up with some clothes. Not long after Gibson arrived in New York aboard the Carpathia, her agent convinced her to star in a movie about the Titanic sinking. She wrote the script herself and wore the same clothes in the movie that she did on the night of the disaster. The film came out just a month after the tragedy. Dorothy later gave up her acting career to work in the Metropolitan Opera. She spent her last years in Paris. What a life! One of the most heartbreaking outcomes of the Titanic sinking was that it tore families apart. The Navrato brothers, Master Michael Marcel and Master Edmund Roger, were just toddlers when they boarded the Titanic with their father. As the Titanic was sinking, he put his boys in the last lifeboat with the final words, My children, when your mother comes for you, as she surely will, tell her that I loved her dearly and still do. Tell her I expected her to follow us so that we might all live happily together in the peace and freedom of the new world. Unfortunately, little Michael and Edmund didn't speak English at all, so it took quite some time to find their relatives. Their mother eventually saw them in the newspaper, and the family reunited a month after the sinking. The brothers grew up to have completely different lives. Michael married his college sweetheart, became a professor of philosophy, and spent the rest of his life in Montpelier. Edmund also got married and worked as an architect and builder. 
Ava Miriam Hart was only 7 years old when she boarded the Titanic with her parents. According to Ava, her mother couldn't sleep at all the whole time she was on board because she'd had a really bad premonition about the trip. While the Titanic was sinking, Ava's father ran to their cabin, wrapped Ava in a blanket, and placed his wife and daughter in lifeboat number 14. The last thing he told Ava was, hold mummy's hand and be a good girl. Ava went on to do many things throughout her life. She was a singer in Australia and a very outspoken activist when it came to the whole Titanic ordeal. She even wrote an autobiography called Shadow of the Titanic, a survivor story. One person Ava Hart probably had a bone to pick with was Joseph Bruce Ismay. Well, she and plenty of others. Ismay was chairman of the White Star Line, the company that operated the Titanic. He was on the ship that night, survived the sinking, and was rescued in collapsible lifeboat C. Upon arriving in the US, he got a ton of heat for leaving the Titanic while there were still women and children on board. After the Titanic, he tried to live a quiet life out of the spotlight. He continued dealing in maritime affairs, although not so much with passenger liners and more with the British Merchant Navy. Professional tennis player Richard Norris Williams was on board the Titanic with his father. Given that the lifeboats, as many know, were reserved for women and children, these two guys were left to fend for themselves on a sinking ship. They did pretty well at first, but once the ship had sunk deep enough to leave the remaining passengers floating in the water, a huge smokestack suddenly collapsed and crashed down on the surface of the water. Perhaps it was purely coincidental, or maybe something more, but the resulting wave washed Richard toward collapsible lifeboat A, so he climbed in. Unfortunately, that lifeboat was full of freezing water that passengers had to stand in up to their knees. These survivors were later transferred to lifeboat number 14, but the damage of the cold water had already been done. Williams got frostbite on his legs, and once on board the Carpathia, the doctors recommended amputating both his lower limbs. But the tennis star would have none of it, so he exercised every day and his legs slowly recovered. He even continued his tennis career, became an Olympic gold medalist, and served in the army. He later became a successful investment banker and president of the Historical Society of Pennsylvania. Now, it's your turn. No, not to sink with the Titanic. I mean, which story moved you the most? Let me know down below. If you learned something new today, then give the video a like and share it with a friend. Here are some other cool videos I think you'll enjoy. Just click to the left or right. And remember, stay on the bright side of life.